Okay, so welcome to everybody from literally all around the world for the World Hope Forum on this special Earth Day. Uh, Lee and I are the founders of the World Hope Forum, which is almost in its third year. And we look forward to today, which is a very special edition, which is going to be focusing on the environment. And uh, we're coming to you today from Milan, where the furniture fair, the annual furniture fair has been taking place. And of course, it's all about making more products and showing new ideas. But many of the uh, exhibitors here are also talking about, of course, making less as well as maybe even not showing new things. So we hope that this wave of change is going to move all around the planet. And today's conference is really about looking to these inspiring advocates from working in all areas of the planet and listening to their stories in order to give us hope, but also to motivate us to make changes and, and inspire others. So um, before we introduce, well, to introduce the, the ambassadors, I'm gonna pass it over to Lee and she will make the official um, welcome. Hi, everybody. Indeed, we're here in Milan. It's very strange contrast to be here and to be celebrating this Earth Day with you, all of you going to uh, give us insight in your work and your activism and fights for the survival of our planet. Although, Philip, it's true that many manufacturers are starting to do some form of recycling or maybe producing less, I still could see a lot of wood and a lot of marble, which is taken from the earth. We are in a week where an um, airship went up in flames and people were applauding, which is a really strange idea that that is uh, worthy of applause. If you think of the pollution already of that one thing, and they just want to go to the moon to develop more material, I'm sure. So there is a very big discrepancy between these worlds, which makes it even more so important today that we as a community uh, with World Hope Forum encounter the community of our Children's Earth Foundation, which was founded in 1998 by Tiffany Schauer, and which is um, ever since um, working and uh, protecting and fighting for um, our environment. She is an enforcement and attorney from the beginning and she has been trained uh, for this uh, uh, in the beginning as now working 20 years in this matter. And together with Ivy Yin, they traveled the world to, um, to make footage, to fight governments, to find corruption, to, to detect the abuse of power. And since they need uh, transparency, um, she has been uh, producing and funding um, a big list of documentaries. And I want to just read a few of the titles because it reads very interesting. Uh, they are called Abuse of Power, Needed Transparency, Total Denial, Garbage Dreams, Island President, Lost Animals. The devil we know is uh, not wearing Prada. It's much worse in this film. And the one who is very approachable today is called Death by Design. Uh, so this is a, a program which is going to be very interesting because it's going to take us into a world we don't know. We have, in fact, not a real clue of what is going on. Uh, Tiffany is um, ambassador of the World Hope Forum today, together with Ivy, who is her partner, and he is a wildlife activist and explorer. He is uh, constantly underwater, uh, making beautiful footage. We've been uh, swimming with him, with dolphins, so we have seen it with our own eyes. Uh, and together with Annie Beeman, who is also working in the foundation where she is the director of advocacy and outreach. She is another advocate. Uh, she is campaigning. She is a multi-generational um, farmer as well and a gardener. So she knows what the earth is all about. Um, 
what is so interesting to note, and you will see this when you are in the program, is that all these people are incredibly stylish and beautiful, outspoken, uh, going to share with us this world, which is um, something very new for most of us, I think. And for us, for Philippe and me, it has been enlightening to meet them and exchange. There's also the fantastic Sylvia Earle. She is named the first hero for the planet by time, amongst many other beautiful titles. She is an oceanographer, explorer. She has written 225 publications and she has uh, 7,500 hours of underwater <laughs> in her life. So this is extreme activism, I can say. Further on, we will work with scientists, environmentalists, conservationists, biodiversitist, photographers, and um, artists. So it's going to be a very much um, cultural view of what is happening to our planet and how urgent the matter is and what we all should know and possibly also share with each other after this day. Uh, I hope this is going to be an enlightening Earth Day. Uh, I know that we are going to be um, incredibly enlightened at the end of the day. So, um, Tiff, um, I think you should start. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. I'm so excited today to be with everyone I love, um, almost everyone on the list we've worked together or want to work with in the future. Um, some of us have long friendships so, and lots of projects together. So it's an honor to spend Earth Day with all of you and be invited to World Hope Forum, who I have looked up to as thought leaders um, for a lot since the three years that you've been there and longer due to our friendship. So Philip asked me to talk a little bit about my background before we go into the curated program. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start there in response to his request. Um, over 20 years ago, I founded our Children's Earth Foundation after working as a lawyer in both government and corporate positions. While I was in the government and corporate positions, I personally witnessed, I was in the room where I witnessed deliberate corporate environmental violations covered up by the government. I witnessed dangerous public health data purposely hidden from the public and witnessed large private industry fraud close up. After being a whistleblower twice, I saw a need for an external check on government and corporate accountability. I started OCE to fill the gap when systems fail to protect the public and the earth. So today, born out of that experience, the rage and the sheer frustration, we now have been in business since 1998. We continue to work to combat pollution and corruption. We use our tools such as community organizing, education, advocacy, litigation, and film. Over the years, we've been involved in some of the largest successful environmental lawsuits in the country, but we also regularly step in to manage smaller, often behind the scenes, legal campaigns. And we assist small community groups that are truly fighting the David and Goliath type battles with little experience or support. They don't have legal knowledge. They don't know how to organize. We also work in the weeds of the arcane government agency oversight. Recently, we won multiple lawsuits to force the EPA to tighten many outdated pollution requirements across entire industries. Over time, our work will result in billions of tons of avoided polluting emissions. We're currently spearheading an ongoing multi-lawsuit campaign forcing municipal sewage treatment plants to upgrade outdated sewage systems. Our actions will avoid hundreds of millions of gallons of untreated, untreated sewage going directly into the ocean, poisoning the ecosystem. We're gonna hear today from some of the most exciting scientists on the earth. And I can continuously say, say about our work that our ability to enforce is only as strong as our science. 
So the scientists are the true heroes to me because I have to look to them and say, what was here, what's been damaged and what is gone? Show me that and then I can take it to the legal campaign and to the communities for educational purposes. But without that, we have no case. So in addition to our work in the legal realm and advocacy realm, over the past 15 years, we've also expanded our work to include support and production of documentary film to communicate some of the most pressing environmental issues. Because not only are we do we need the science, the laws and the enforcement, we need the storytellers to communicate what is happening in these back rooms and in these arcane places of complex technical um, work so that the greater public can know what is happening so that they can act. We've come to realize that films and storytelling can be one of the most effective tools to help the public become aware. Some of the films we've supported included Youth v. Gov, The Devil We Know, The Island President, and most recently Deep Rising, the new movie showcasing the threat of deep sea mining in unregulated international waters. Today we have um, we're especially thrilled because we have our friends Melissa and Trevor here to talk about their compelling Amazon movie hit, Wildcat. They're on the front lines. They're usually in the jungle. They probably are now. I think Melissa's calling in from India on their project, but they again become some of the trench workers to communicate these problems that we're all doing our part in our silo of expertise. But we have seen that the science we need the science to prove the harm so we can make and enforce the laws to protect. We need the storytellers to communicate the larger ecosystem so that the greater public can then act and participate. So discovering that ecosystem and how we can all work together and even having a world hope forum like this today gives me hope because it's starting to look at the entire process and how we can all work together and become even more powerful. It's an inspiration for me to take even more action, to make a change, to create a better future for the earth. So it's activated hope, if that makes sense. And that's the way I look at it. Like my actions are hopeful. And hope can lead to really big things like a single history changing audacity of electing the first black president to the United States. It can lead to an uprising of a young generation like we depicted in Youth v. Gov who are eclipsing most environmental legal movements we've seen in history. But more importantly, and maybe, I mean, I think more importantly, there's also the potential for powerful hope in almost every decision you make each day. Every cent you spend can indicate your desire to change the supply chain impact. Your time can be, sent, can be spent to gain industry experience so that one day you can disrupt that industry to reduce its footprint. You can vote your conscience. You can eat knowing the source of your food and avoid food that causes damage or suffering to the earth or others. To me, meaningful action is virtually limited. And these small actions that scale to larger consumer trends can change this world drastically. And I think that's why Philip and Lee and I are friends. I think we all understand the integratedness and the connectedness of all of us. And through working together and talking like this together that we can become even more impactful. Our speakers today are some of the most powerful examples of activated hope, making change that I've witnessed. My OCE team members, Annie and Ivy, will be helping me to introduce the speakers today and moderate. I'm just going to say a little bit about them. Ivy, as Lee indicated, is almost always underwater or in the field. He creates original content for us. He creates contents for the scientists that you're going to meet today. And he's constantly on investigation and sometimes undercover. He is actually in the trenches more than most of us um, could ever imagine. So we're grateful to him. And he is one of our communicators to the public. Annie is our director of advocacy and outreach. And he's in, involved in all aspects of our work, managing our outreach and campaigns, and also our great peacemaker between 
our legal teams, our board, our staff members, and our ally organizations. One thing that you may find that I find really compelling and interesting about Annie is she attended both art school and law school. Her unconventional education combination has served her well in creating breakthrough models for advocacy and efficiency. Working on the left and right side of the brain, I'm not sure what how it works, but it's a genius that we are so grateful to have. So I'm going to turn it over to Annie now to introduce our first speaker. Thank you so much, Tiff. Can everybody hear me? It's great to be here. Happy Earth Day. Um, I'm so uh, honored to be able to celebrate it with you all. Um, don't have much to add to Tiffany's beautiful sentiments. I totally agree about the force of activated hope um, for the world. In my work as a community organizer, I've seen that that type of hope is often born out of love, which is highly motivating. Um, campaigns that are fueled by hope and love are the by far the most likely to succeed. Um, so I, I mean, I never want to minimize the environmental problems that we're up against. We face enormous challenges in this world. Um, but I can say I'm, honestly, I can say that I'm more optimistic than I've ever been that some of the solutions we need at least are actually within reach. 